What's up, guys? My name is Khan, and we're back, back today with more Railroads Online. What's up, Heist? How's it going, dude? We're Doing pretty good, man. We're we're on the way. We're, we're running through the, the reverse loop, and we're going to head to the sawmill today to check out what we got going on there. And I think we you've got... We don't have much going on there. We, we, we really... We don't. Well, we, we don't. Make stuff go we, on we have like a, a, a total mess that I need to, you know, let you yeah. fix because I can't do things. So, you know. It's good, man. I, I'm actually really enjoying laying track. Look, look at how smooth this curve is, okay? Look, look, at how, look at how great this is. I can see you over there. This is just wonderful. This curve is actually pretty awesome. This is a great balloon loop, and it's nice and wide so we can run through it nice and fast. And it's awesome. So I'm excited to see what you're going to come up with in the sawmill today because, yeah, Lord knows my log pond track wasn't even straight. So, so I actually want, I wanted to talk to you about that because I have a question. This is, is, is all legitimate. So I make a lot of shunt yards in this game, and a lot of them are straight. But I thought today I would try and make a curved shunt yard with the actual because you can make such consistent curves. And I'm wondering, like, does that even exist? Like, are there shunt yards that are curved, like with slight curves on the individual lanes? Or are they always straight? Like, I mean, there I guess are, straight is ideal. There are many that are curved. Uh, you know, it's it's all about boundary conditions. You got to work with the space and the area that you have available to you, right? So if you're in the middle of Nebraska, in the middle of the United States, and you got a big open wide field, you build the largest straight shunt yard in the whole world. Uh, but, you know, like places like Seattle, where I used to work for the real railroad, BNSF, we had to have lots of curves and kinks in the yard because there just wasn't a whole lot of space. Because so, all the mountains and stuff. Yeah, mountains, water, bridges, you know, all that fun stuff. So you got to work with the space you got, and the sawmill's pretty tight. So I think it's totally good to do a curved shunt yard as much uh, as much fun as it wouldn't be to deal with the, uh, the older rolling stock in there. But thankfully in the game, it'll it'll work pretty well. So... Yeah, so, like, with that, you wouldn't have issues hitching or anything, right? Because as you go around, like, like the hitches should still always line up. I guess it depends on how steep you the would curves be, are. You would be surprised with some sorts of couplers and some types of hitches, as you're calling them. Uh, sometimes it is actually surprisingly hard on a curve. To the point of, um, at the museum, we run with several cars that were built in the 1870s and the 1880s. And they have older-style couplers. And the older style couplers, not quite as old as Lincoln Pin, but the first sort of automatic coupler, they really do not like coupling on a curve. So we always park with our cars on the straight so that we have an easy time coupling because you fight them all day long if you're parked in a in a sharp curve. But a, a gentle curve would be fine. So I think the, now, the curve shunt yard will be fun. Okay, so you're talking about Lincoln Pin and all that. Modern couplers, or like, you know, more modern couplers, are they all still manually, they're not manually, like, clamped, are they? They've got to be, like, hydraulic or something to unlock and lock them, or is it all mechanical it still? It is like, all it's mechanical all still. You know, it's some... Straight mechanical? Straight mechanical, at least for the stuff that's in American Freight Railroad service. Uh, you know, some stuff that's, like, light rail or high-speed passenger have more advanced uh, electromechanical couplers that have a whole bunch more stuff to them. But everything that's on, you know, like Amtrak or American Freight Railroads is entirely mechanical. So you're pulling a lever, it pulls a pin, and that kicks the knuckle out, and that's what opens it up. That's so cool. And they are really, really unique and neat systems, and, it, and it's amazing how little the design has changed in hundreds of years. Well, I see uh, you're, you've hopped off and you've dropped trees on me. I wish we could oh, just did dump... I, did they that, actually land? Oh, it landed on the train. The tree. If only... <laughs> You were supposed to drop in the pod, dude. What I know. Man? I was going to say, it, des it despawned like, before I could drop it in the log pond. That yeah, would have been, been so great. nice. Well, I'm going to just start working here. Uh, you know, obviously, Heist is going to go collect more logs. We've got that eighth car now, so we're going to start dumping logs and really just filling up the lumber mill. Let me know when you're on your way back, though, because I may or may not actually have track. Um, well, you know, that's, you know, minor you detail. Need, you just show up you and the track's track. gone. It's fine. Yeah. It might, it might be. Uh, plus, there's splines that are quite large, so, you know, we're gonna... Oh, God, I deleted a huge spline. Okay, well, apparently that's... that's well, I'm delightful. still on the rail, so... That's I'm, good. That's, that's good. good. That was a yeah. long spline, dude. <laughs> it was... <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, oh, yeah, so new, new update, big turntable too now, which is exciting. That's I dude, cool. I'm so excited to get to play with some of that stuff. You'll we'll have to you'll have to put the big turntable down so we can see that because we don't we don't need money for that. And, and I guess there's end of track devices. There's some buffers, which um, th they don't look terribly yeah. narrow gauge prototypical, um, but I'm, I imagine that they're based off of some prototype. So they, they'll at least be handy for you know making sure we don't send it too hard in the yard. Yeah. 
and then uh, and then the new engine, the the two eight zero, the Mosca, which we'll we'll definitely talk about the Mosca when we get it. Um, I think it, it it'll deserve its own whole episode because what a neat choo choo that thing is. Yeah, we we uh, we broke. We very very broke early. Is the uh, yeah current, we we do not have current. monies. Yeah, we can't even buy a flat is, car at the moment. Yeah, we are very, very collectively broke. But it's good. We're going to load up the sawmill. We're going to get a lot of parts in the sawmill. And then we're going to start selling sawmill parts for, you know, slightly more than we sell logs. And uh, life will be good. And yeah. then eventually we'll have to buy... The, the unfortunate thing is, like, really we want to get to iron as soon as possible. Because that's, like, where you start making the big bucks. But the iron and coal, you need the hoppers, and the hoppers are very expensive. Very car. expensive, yeah. It's going to be yeah. challenging to get there. So yeah. I bet we can. It, it'll just take a little time. Oh, no, we have to play more railroads online and hang out. Whatever will I we know, do? Right? Like, so, <laughs> someone, someone commented the other day. They were like, I love this and these these episodes because all it is is Heist explaining stuff and Khan struggling to understand. <laughs> I don't think you struggle to understand. It's probably well, my explanation being bad more more often than not. But you know, depends on what it is, I guess. There's some stuff I get. All right, I've I've arrived at the logging camp, but I'm running through the the reverse loop through the back forty here through the woods. So I'm gonna turn around and I'll load on my way out, and I'll let you know when I'm on the way down the hill. All right, someone said number two and eight. Oh, that is wicked cool, man. So you can so like. That's for changing the leg the of the switch, switch, right? Yeah, so rather than always linking to the base of the switch, I don't have to do that stupid switch trick anymore. I can literally just select which one I want to link it to. That's really nice. That's, that is that quality is, of life that has been missing that, from the game for a long time. You have to be able to come in and drop off logs and then loop around and go back the way you came. Yeah, that would be ideal. So a, a reverse loop that's tied into the log unload somehow would be smart. Right, so you need to be able to go in two different directions. But you also kind of want a pass-through track, too. Because if you have, like, worst case, you'd have someone running a log train unloading logs, and you'd have someone coming through the cordwood train. And you wouldn't right, want the cordwood. The cordwood. You wouldn't yeah, want to yeah, have to run through the, the log train or, like, the reverse loop to do that. So. Right, I got you. I got you. And I guess you technically need a pass-through to be able to bring your empties back around without having to... Yeah, because you need to be able to bring empties back around while someone else is, like, potentially loading up planks and stuff. Yeah, definitely. So ideally, ideally, we don't want those to be on the same loop. But I could have the cordwood bypass as your return loop because, technically speaking, like the chance of you unloading logs at the same time someone needs the cordwood bypass, you know, like it would Pretty be small. You, wait for next, yeah. you wait for 30 seconds, let them go, and then you just keep. So yeah, I could do that. So, okay. so you, could, it, you could build like a Y configuration with three switches as part yeah. of the reverse loop so that the reverse loop is also the bypass. You can choose yeah. to just bypass the pond or turn around and go the other way. That'd probably be the yeah, smart Yeah, this is gonna, this to is gonna, it. I don't know how this is gonna work. This is gonna, this is gonna be something. We're gonna, I'm gonna have to redo that part too at some point, but that'll be. I've tried so to set up the sawmill, like I think three or four times now, and I've never found a, an exact version that I really liked. So maybe this will be the time, and it'll be the time because Khan does it. So you know. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a press X to doubt on that one, <laughs> sir. Just uh, gonna just gonna. I've seen some people do some crazy sawmills. Like there are some people who did sawmills with like bridges over the pond, and they just drop the logs off the bridge. We're going for you know a little bit more realism than that, but you know I, it's it's still cool. Well, you know the funny thing is in some in some sawmill locations, uh, particularly in the Pacific Northwest where there was a lot of logging railroads, some of them actually dropped off logs off of a pier. They would actually have not like a crazy high bridge, but they'd have a bridge over the bay, you know, out as a stub track, and they'd shove out basically on a like a dock for a boat, but with railroad track on it, and then they would dump logs over the side into the bay to have them go upstream or, or get loaded onto ships or go to the sawmill that way. Interesting. So there is some historical precedent for some of that stuff. Trying to visually trying to map this out in my head. I like I like to lay out a bunch of switches, even though this is more old school with the way I used to build track. I like to lay out switches initially though, just to sort of like gauge like, you know, first of all, you get perfectly straight lines with the switches. Yeah. But then second 
sort of gauge like where everything's going to be kind of like roughly laid out and a switch is generally like a pretty gradual curve so if you yes. have a, a curve made up of switches you're in a pretty good spot but then when you start to lay out around the sawmill you realize like it's so like small it's very it's compact. so tight to that hill and you have to have some pretty sharp curves to really make it yeah. work but i definitely agree with you that laying out the switches is a great way to get your track plan sort of doled out in your head because the switch gives you the picture of what goes on when you're just laying splines or something you don't really get that good of a picture or an idea of spacing but when you put down the switches you kind of get an understanding of what's really possible and how quickly you can make the different tracks diverge or come together uh which, yeah, exactly. which can be really hard to see until you kind of put it down it's one of those things where you know the blank canvas is intimidating but you put a switch down you start to see Oh, no, I see how this can come together. I can see the spacing. This will work. Yeah, I'm having a lot more of the this isn't going to work, but that's okay. Well, I mean, that also can happen. Life's hard sometimes. You know, that's fine. I think that looks pretty good. So far, I've just laid out, like, the spots. You might be able to get, like, six log trips done before I'm even done this, uh, this freaking... <laughs> we will see. I'm, I'm loading yeah. cars three and four right now. I'm in the midst oh, of God. crane clicking have, simulator 1885. You have no line connecting you back up. <laughs> it's fine. I have eight cars. I'm not even halfway filled yet. Please, please, yeah. can we get upgradable cranes? Day, day, oh my God. Yeah, day 638 right. of asking for upgradable cranes. That's true. Upgradable cranes is like, I think that that's like the biggest quality of life I think the game is actually like missing is upgradable cranes. Although we're still technically broke. So even if we had upgradable cranes, it wouldn't we, really you, we would be not be doing out. anything yet. Yeah. 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 We would, I would imagine that would be an expensive, you know, a few thousand dollar type upgrade. And yeah. What did you do? I spent all the money on the cranes. I was yeah. tired of clicking. <laughs> right away, you just keep Betsy in the one car, but you go and spend all your money upgrading the logging cranes. <laughs> yes, we've loaded the car. Now we spend all of our time running. Yeah. Okay, so now I got to figure out. Okay, so this loop, I'm like, I kind of just want the plank loop. There's no reason the plank train, plank and beam loading train ever needs to go to the logging camp. Correct, yeah. So it can just loop around and go back into the shunt yard over here. Yeah, okay, I know what I'm gonna do now. This is gonna be sick, dude. This is gonna be this All is right. gonna be I'm excited to hear it. Sick, I mean it's gonna be terrible, but we're gonna pretend. It is going gonna... to be ill. It will be literally dying of a fever. Gotcha. Yeah, I think it'll be cool. I don't know. And it, it's I gonna be idea. interesting, you know, I think for me, the the reasons that I didn't like my last couple sawmill layouts was because I ended up having so many switches to line. You'd have to stop and line all these switches, but now you can just barrel through all of them, you know, with yeah. reckless abandon. So maybe it'll be great. I don't know. Yeah, you're going to come in, I think, more over the hill. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. It's, okay. It's, I, feel like, it's fine. I feel like you're going to end up doing a few trips today. That, that's all right. We got to make money. So, you know, yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy to, to run trains. Not to, not to, you know, damper your mood or anything. I, 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 Wait, what am I even doing? Why is this, on, like, why am I lining this up this way? I don't know, Con. Why are you? There's no reason for that. Uh, cause I need to get back into. Oh, cause I need to get back into the shunt yard. Is that gonna be? I don't know if this lineup's gonna work, but it might. Why would I ever need? Oh, All right. God. You know what we really need too? What? Crossover pieces that aren't nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Oh, I, you know I don't know, cause with the when it was gonna be the new spline train mechanic, you could have just laid two tracks over each other at whatever angle, and it worked. But I with the the new way that the trains are working with the new splines, I I think you still have to use the crossover piece. So yeah, right, like, like 45s 45, or 60s or something would be 30s, great. 30s, 60s, 45s. It would all be it would all be wonderful. I think it it's so funny to me looking back. Uh, being a beta tester for the game way back when, many moons ago, the 90 degree crossover piece was added two weeks before release. Like, That's crazy. We weren't even sure it was going to work, and it didn't work the first time. I, the first time I placed one down and tested it, I was the first one to test it. And I just slammed Betsy into it full speed and did a barrel roll, you know, cab over boiler because it hit the collisions. <laughs> But right. uh, it got figured out and it worked. So anyway, uh, I'm fully loaded, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start wandering oh, down good. the hill here. No, that's good. That's good. I'll connect. I'll connect some track for you. I'll give you. you know, I'll I'll just connect. It's great with these splines. I can literally just click and click and link, and it, it might be sketchy, but like you know, that's it'll be fine. connected. It's better than anything on the ESND. So you know. 
Yeah, it's just gonna... Oh boy, I'm so slow at building this layout compared to how far I thought I would be at this point in time. <laughs> well, it's only been a couple minutes. It can't be too bad. You're gonna come back and be like, wow, this is embarrassing. This is this is an embarrassing amount of, of Ooh, progress. Well, I'm excited. I gotta, I gotta say something while I'm staring at the, the beautiful lettering on the tender, the Montezuma. I got right. a bunch of comments on my last video about people freaking out about the period being at the end of the name, the Central Rio and Pacific with a period at the end. And everyone right. was, was was mad about it. And it's like, guys, that, that's what they did. Every railroad did that in the 1800s. That was considered proper punctuation to the point of on if a, anything... On a, on a name. If anything was abbreviated or shortened or it was the end, they would add a period. There was an engine I saw at the Great Western Steam Up in Carson City where the full name of the engine was like the Joseph Douglas, but they shortened it to fit on the cab to say Joe Douglas. So it was Joe, period, Douglas, period. That's so weird. It's so weird. It's one of those bonkers things that doesn't make any sense from early railroad, and I mean, early history, it wasn't just the railroad. But if you look at pictures of the Denver and Rio Grande engines back in the day, the tender said Denver and Rio Grande, period, on the end. So that's, yeah, that seems really, I mean, I guess it makes sense because you're like, you know, we're abbreviating it. We want people to know, but that's still, still really weird. Yeah, definitely something that is of a, that forgotten era, you know, back when people were writing in cursive and crazy things like that, you know. <laughs> Did, Actually, I remember wait. that was so funny when I got, first got to university and they were like, all right, all that cursive you learn, we're not going to do any of that. Yeah, no longer. We're not doing that anymore. We're not. We're not gonna. We're not gonna um, do that. Uh, Con, my game crashed, oh, and the, the the train is on the way down the hill, uh, and it is full reg. So, oh, good perfect. luck. <laughs> perfect. No, that's good. That's good. I'll. Uh, you know what? This this seems like an opportune time. To to test out the end of track device. <laughs> put a bumper on the end of the track and see what happens. <laughs> got a full reg train coming that's great i mean it shouldn't fall off the track i think our track is pretty smooth yeah i guess we'll, we'll see I'm, I'm loading back in now i was just about to freak out because i'd loaded all of the cars and then from the distance i was the load in the last car despawned or it looked like it despawned maybe it wasn't just rendering so i don't know if there's a different render distance on cars versus loads or maybe something happened and it did something oh god i'm at the freight depot Oh, good. Well, run your way over here. I guess oh, I'll... Oh, I see I'll, your train I'll, coming. Here I'll comes bring your Betsy. train. Here comes the train. Hold on. I'm going to put a bumper down. This could end in potential disaster. Oh, man. Oh, the, is, the first derailment on the crap. It is coming fast. Oh, God. I got a link. Please link. Please link. Please link. Where's the link? Why are you not linking? Linked. Okay. 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 I put a bumper. Oh, no. Okay. Well, one of my favorite games is <laughs> 52 Star card Fox, pickup. Star Fox 64. Oh, dude, that game's badass. You know the part when he's like, do a barrel roll? Uh oh. That's what, <laughs> do a barrel roll! The, the, the train engine, like the locomotive, is the only thing that yeeted itself off the track. It yeeted the locomotive and it yeeted the uh, tender, but the cars are all actually still perfectly on the track here. Well. That's an so, interesting result. <laughs> yeah, it actually it actually worked out better than I thought it would. Anyway, I'll put this back on the track. It seems to have a preferred reroute um, direction. I don't um, want to rotate it. Con. What? Con. I Game tried crashed. to get out of the UI to put more firewood in Betsy, and it threw me out of Betsy. So now Betsy's running away oh at you very God. slowly. I might catch oh. her. I don't know. She's coming from the freight depot side. She's almost out of oh. pressure. So I might catch it. We'll see. Hey, why you brought Betsy? Why do you need Betsy? What are we? Well, because it was going to be faster than running. And there's a saying on the railroad that a good railroader is a lazy railroader because you're less likely to slip, trip, and fall to your but, death. Okay, was it was okay. it going to be faster than running though? If, uh, like, I mean, maybe. I'm back if, in. I'm if, I'm in Betsy. It's fine. There's no longer two runaway. I mean, one one runaway oh train. You know, it's fine. It's. I mean, now now that it. I have zero pressure. I mean, I'm still going, but you know, it's just I'm slowly slowing down. <laughs> I'm almost there. Come on, Betsy, build build pressure. And you're like poking with a stick. Do something. Do something. Oh, I hear you. I've got 20 psi. 
Dude, this is ridiculous. <laughs> the good news is your load actually stayed on the track with the track stopper. I'm I'm blown away by oh, that. Oh, that's good. Oh, okay. Well, I see. I've found end of track here. So I guess I'll just yeah. leave Betsy at end of track. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. I didn't connect that back up. That's this fine. Is, she I didn't just... think I'd need that. Yeah. Okay, let's no, see. Let's right. see what's going on here. Well, we've got a pile of switches. All right. Don't worry, it's all set up for you, good to go. You just gotta hook the uh, engine back up to the tender. Okay. This is just my layout, ignore all this. Don't worry about it, this is just... This is just, uh, we're making the, the Aperture Science logo out of track. Yeah, this is just me experimenting a little bit. Oh, hey, look, my game not... crashed again. <laughs> Your guy, like, literally is, is in the running pose. Like, he's, like, running forward, <laughs> but he's frozen. John Railroadson, frozen in time. Well, now you don't have an inch. <laughs> now, now, now you have to run, Ice. Okay, well, fine. Okay, I've made it back. We, oh, that's good. Welcome I've, back, we're, sir. Ran Betsy back, ran myself back several times. Uh, turns here's out, your, Here's your you train, know, sir. Th thank you. Look, look, and it's not derailed at all. I'm going to have to watch your video to see the derailment oh, on it, my it, end. It, yeah, it, it ate it pretty hard. <laughs> Good news is uh, I'm not anywhere close to the progress I thought I would be uh, at, so... Well, you know, it's fine. You, you can go on unload more logs. And, yeah, uh, we got we got to make some more cash here. Make some more cash, exactly. I'm I'm very so I'm realizing now I was gonna try and do this whole like shunt yard bypass line all in one, but I'm thinking I'm gonna just focus on getting like the the bypass lines set up properly and then worry about shunt yard later. You know. Gotcha. I, I put a little stub off one. the back so I can back up and get the rest of these loaded because I think yeah, I just on I that. think I just dumped a. Uh, I dumped one car load that is just going to do nothing apparently. So, oops. How's that? Is that pretty good? That should probably be all right. Let's back up and see what we got here. So that line is is there. Oh boy. Montezuma, no, the fire went out. <laughs> oh, did it? <laughs> I forgot to. I forgot to it's fuel okay. the fire. It's fine. It's fine. It'll heat up eventually. All right. Oh, good. No, that was wow. Remember how you were all like, hey, man, it's hard to make a kink? <laughs> did, you, uh, did you find the way? Bro, oh, just, yeah. Just wait, just wait until you get here. That's, like, look at um, this. I, that looks bad from here. I'm going to get this thing spotted up. and Look at uh, look it. I'll, I'll wait until you're gone before I start deleting rail because I've learned my lesson <laughs> from the numerous <laughs> times I've had to re-rail trains. But... And all of a sudden, the entire train's in the dirt. Yes. Yeah, like, right? Like, where's the crane to put it back on the track? You know what I'm saying? Yep, you gotta get a Derek. Come on. Come this on. kink is pretty bad though. This is this is next level. All right, all the that logs kinks. are unloading. That's um. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's yeah. that is that is really a kink. That's that's some spicy. That's that some is, spicy. That is spicy action right there. That's not jalapeno track. That's like Serrano track at least. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's like. Picante. Me, sir, I'd like extra hot sauce, and then you're like, oh, okay, no problem. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's no good. All right, this is perfect. Now we're now we're gonna make tons of money um, with all this all this logging that you're gonna do. Hopefully, you can enjoy Crane Simulator 2022. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's the that, it's the whole thing. You know, QOL to come, cranes, yeah. and then uh, after the recent experience that I just had, uh, fast travel. That would be uh, that'd be nice too. True, fast travel. Yeah, in between locations, we'd always talked about. Um, and Kimmy seemed on board when I was still on the team, so maybe it will come someday, but talked about like a telegraph office that you'd hook up and then run telegraph lines and then you could teleport between telegraph offices. That sounds, that sounds smart. That sounds cool. Yeah, so like you could, you know, set up more infrastructure for your railroad and make it feel more railroady and then also get good functionality out of it. Well, it'd be nice to be able to like have trains at different industries and be like, oh, I need to go run some logs and then just teleport there. Go run your logs. Yeah. Or like I've been saying since day one, right? Horses, okay. All dude, we need, dude, give us a horse. Just give me a horse, and you know it'll it'll work out great. And I can just ride my horse, and that'll be that. What I would like to see is thermodynamics that makes sense because, uh, thankfully, my fire caught up enough that now I'm building pressure on the way up the hill, and I won't have to stop. But we were violating the rules of thermodynamics for a brief bit there where the water temperature was zero and the boiler pressure was very high, and that's not how that works. Right. If you've taken thermodynamics and you recall your steam tables, you have to have steam and you know pressure and temperature 
are linked when you've got liquid and gas under pressure in a vessel. So if you've got water and steam, if you are at 200 PSI, you're at like 400 degrees Fahrenheit or whatever it is. Uh, and as soon as the pressure changes, so does the temperature. So the fact that I can have full boiler pressure, but cold water, no, that doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. Well, you just got to believe believe in the heart of the video game shenanigans indeed you just gotta believe in the heart of the cards and if you do that then you will have both boiler pressure and steam pressure simultaneously <laughs> good railroads online uh should also have uh cards that's what i'm thinking like like you know trading cards as part of the Th that would be fun it's like oh your train is running under boiler pressure but wait i play extra logs <laughs> times two <laughs> welcome to the card mini game yeah, the card mini game. What happens when they pull an Uno reverse on you? You just oh, get yeah, no, sent back. Yeah. Plus two derailment. Oh, <laughs> no, damn, don't do man. that. Don't curse me that way. <laughs> Can you imagine this whole game just becomes like just a trading card game instead? That'd be silly. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying something here, man. I don't know. I don't know what I'm. How I feel about it. But we're we're just going for it. You know, we're just going for it. Right on. I'm crossing the trestle up to the logging camp here, and I'm going to, again, load on the way out, running through the sweet reverse loop through the woods. Dude, I like that reverse loop. It's so pretty. I, I love that, running through all the trees with all the different colors around here. It's really yeah, pretty. Yeah, when I built that, I made sure not to delete, like, any excess trees. I just wanted to leave all the natural, the natural growth, you know? Yeah, it's pretty. I like it. Going to run into a problem. What's the problem, Con? Give I don't I don't know what you're doing. You're my eyes. You're my ears. You, I need to give you a reverse line to like go back the other way. You know what I'm saying? And that I would be ideal. Not, yeah. I'm not doing that. So like that's that's the issue. You need a turnaround line somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know what the best way to do a turnaround at the sawmill is because if like if you run through the log pond and then you try and turn left to consolidate oh, with your your loading, it's it's, yeah. it's so sharp, right? Yeah. No, I agree. It's terrible. You, if you try and turn right, though, it's like it gets hard to like dial it back in. I think, but you could probably do it that way. Well, I have ideas here that I'm trying to. Make He's work. an idea man, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'm just I'm just using the opportunity to just do different different things this time. You know, like why not, right? Let's just try something out and see what happens. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm yeah. doing so. I have a, like a bypass line, so if you're coming back with cordwood, you can completely bypass the unload. That's um, smart. Which is cool, and then it connects back up to the main on the other side, which is obviously super cool. Um, but the issue with that, of course, is it uh, sort of has an issue where um, I need a lot of switches. You know, like yeah. just a lot of yeah. <laughs> ends yeah. up being a lot to i mean when you start adding passing doesn't... tracks i mean it's you're not adding one you're adding two switches every time so like why does that not line up you might get a lot of loads off today well you know we got to make money man we got to buy cars i don't have that much i, I got I'll, I'll check once i start loading i'm scared to hop out of the driving ui right now all right i'm spotted and loading the first couple cars here I clicking on crane simulator has begun i thought you're gonna be like i'm done loading all of them i would have been like oh my god bro <laughs> i don't <laughs> I need the track back, Con. Put it yeah, back. I don't, I don't. I ain't got that kind of that kind of build speed, you know. <laughs> yeah, you can build a whole train length at a time. So I mean, as long as the logging camp, like, or the uh, log pond is vaguely open, it shouldn't be too hard to slap right. it down when you need to. Yeah, well, I got two main lines, right? You've got the the main line and the bypass line, but then you've got a cross for the people who pick up planks and beams because they got to be able to go back the other way, you know. Mmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. There may not be a crazy shunting area at this log mill. Honestly, I, as much as I want to put a shunt yard here, I think it makes more sense to not have a shunt yard here and just have it as, like, a bunch of different passageways for loading and unloading. Because, like, realistically, you don't really ever need trains at the sawmill. It's a very popular destination, but you always go there, grab something, and then go to where you actually want to be. Yeah, it's definitely so. It's because it's so early in the chain. You're not like loading and leaving stuff there. Yeah, you're not gonna like load up a car with beams and just leave it at the sawmill. You're gonna just load it and then leave. So I want to make it like really flowy in and out. Yeah, because so it can handle it's about, a lot of traffic. It's about like unit train operation, and and a lot of railroads online right now is actually pretty unit train 
based, which I hope it moves away from someday uh, to right. be a little bit more representative of the era. But, you know, where you're running a train of one commodity and you, you run through like a reverse loop or sort of setup like I'm doing right now where I go, I go to the logging camp, I load up with a bunch of logs, I've got a train that is all logs, take it to its destination and unload it. Whereas like more common in this era was a manifest train where, okay, I'm at, you know, one location. I'm at a town. I'm at Denver. And I'm heading vaguely towards Alamosa in southern Colorado. And I'll bring stuff that goes to Alamosa, but some stuff that goes to other parts of Colorado that will get switched out at Alamosa at their, you know, at their shunting yard. Yeah, and I so mean, it'll I be a mixed the, train. But. The problem with, with, in that sense, with Railroads Online is the fact that all the industries are sort of um, so far separated. Like there's yeah. no real there's no real incentive to be like oh I'm gonna have a logging tray that also does this delivery because your logs are going to point A which is you know one place in the map and and something else is going to point B right yeah if sort we of had, like towns and cities that we had to help like develop with resources then that would yeah. be that like, would be or, fun. or destinations that change their demands that were like hey I want some of this and some of that not just not just binary just this yeah. which you know I imagine that sort of thing will likely come down the road when the game gets a little bit more developed because right now, I mean, we've been dealing with really core issues, right? Rakima has been right. working on really core issues of track lane and, and new, new engines and, and all that stuff. So I imagine that stuff will hopefully come later, but it'll be interesting to see what comes because, yeah, making the economic side of it more intertwined would uh, would make it a lot more fun and, and give the purpose to the, the shunting yards like they really had, I would think. Might clean this up later with something that's not just Phil. Feels like it might need another l wildlife crossing if you know what i mean <laughs> gotta make it's sure the critters a, can get a, underneath it's a bit of a steep one you got like 60 deer just dead because they couldn't climb the hill you know over the track <laughs> like it's it's a, it's a rough rough life it is you'd be surprised at how uh how well they can climb the ballast though we've uh at the museum for the longest time i, I haven't seen him this year but we had a, a deer uh, or two, a little family of deer that lived at the museum or nearby the museum, and we would see them wandering around. I've actually got a picture of them uh, on the turntable. Dude was just strutting around early on a Sunday morning, and it's like, that's a deer on the turntable. What's it doing there? <laughs> yeah, and he's probably looking at you like, bruh, what, 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 what do you want? This is my house. Why are you here? Yeah. I live here. Oh, sorry, man. But yeah, definitely during like one of the early years of Polar Express, we were running the train, and and there was the deer and he jumped up the fill and it's like, get out of the way. Get off the tracks, dude. Start I blowing the whistle time, at him. <laughs> I was uh I was golfing and me and my buddy we're we're on this this tee box and we're golfing and there was this fox just staring at us. And like I swear I've never felt so judged on a golf swing in my entire <laughs> life than with this Eddie, he was like literally six feet away, didn't care. You, you're swinging like a big metal object. He's like, bruh, like what? Are you, and he's just staring at us the whole time. And I was like, all right, just cool. Like, I guess. Well, you sliced it, con. And then you're yeah, like, oh, what a shot! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh man, that's hilarious. Yeah, it was not a good time. Yeah, I sometimes wonder what the what the bunnies at the museum have seen and and thought about us and our and our train operations. Oh, why why'd you pick that track, huh? You're switching out that way, huh? Hmm. There's like hundreds of bunnies. That you live actually at the don't know. They 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 come awake at night and they uh, <laughs> they reorganize the trains. The trains for us. They just yeah. take the trains and some joy rides. I wouldn't be surprised. All right, so this is like like the bypass line for cordwood exists, but like that's I don't have a turnaround line for you yet. You know, what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna go back to this and then I'm gonna clean up the front and then I'm gonna figure out how to do this. I've got so I've got a section for someone coming in from the freight depot side could load up beams and then I'm gonna make a loop for them to go back, but I don't really have a loop for you yet. You need a loop. I do, and I'm gonna be needing it soon because these are the last two logs on the train right now. Well, you got you've got a line to come in on for well, sure. Well, at least is that. Figure yeah, it out from there. In the right direction. You'll like it too, I think. Oh, okay. I don't know. I'm excited. Well, I'm gonna I'm heading up to the engine here now, so I'm gonna be highballing out the yard here in a sec. Yeah, now I'm gonna connect the main line back up. I've also left a switch open for eventually going to the smelter, but we'll have to build like a full out Y there because sometimes you go from the freight depot straight to the smelter versus like, you know. Yeah, definitely. Going through the logging camp. 
Definitely, yeah. That's uh, always a, that's like a junction location. Pretty common in the with this map. Yeah. I gotta say, you know, I I'm hoping someday that there's a new map for the game too, because I think that would make so much more playability with the game is just solving new problems with new boundary conditions. You know. Oh, I agree. I uh, yeah, I agree. I um, I'd love to see. I know I know it'd be very difficult because the game's in Unreal and all that, but terraforming would be cool too to be able to oh, like man. manipulate. Yeah. Do some terrain manipulation. I know it's difficult because the you know like freaking Unreal's uh, not Unreal's not fond with it. Yeah. Yeah, Unreal's a very difficult thing to use for that, but. All right, I don't know. There's the the, the new Sorry. Unreal Five builds are coming out, and they're apparently doing stuff. So maybe someday he could go to Unreal Five or something, and maybe have a little bit better time with that. Now I'm playing the uh, good old game of find the main line. <laughs> That's fine. I could probably help you with that. Hear your whistle. Oh, it's over there. Oh, perfect. Actually, I'm in a good spot. Never mind. I lied. I found the main line. Okay. I just blew my uh, my call for a station stop. I don't have a conductor on my train, but it was a historical practice on uh, uh, narrow gauge railroads like the DNRG, at least in the DNRG W and DNRG timetables, to uh, have one long whistle when you approach a stationed location or a location with a name. So in this case, the sawmill. And then uh, the conductor would tell you what to do as you look back at him. And three shorts means conductor told you to stop. And then two longs would be, uh, or we're going to continue on. Oh, I see what you're getting going. This is pretty. Yeah, it's very, like, I'm trying to do super gradual stuff, so. Okay, all right. I'm I'm, I'm really liking this so far. And Betsy's Betsy's on the alignment where it makes some amount of sense for it to be. Yeah, I, yeah. Don't, don't, just, just pretend Betsy's not. Don't worry about Betsy. Well, we'll get an engine shed put in at some point. We'll be fine. This I log. I need... <laughs> The Montezuma's break is just a, a sadness. It's bad. It it's is bad. The, these logs are just showing me what's up. <laughs> just absolutely shoved me all the way across the pond. All right, I'm gonna let the train roll backwards slowly while I unload this stuff. It's never a good feeling. You can feel it in the cab sometimes when you're running a train, just like when you know that the train is super heavy and it just manhandles the engine. That definitely, that's definitely something you can feel. Like, we're usually the other way around at the museum because we, we don't have so many operating cars uh, versus our engines, you know? Like, so we're usually under tonnage pretty significantly. But every right. now and then we'll, we'll get enough cars behind the engine. It's just like, you're going down the hill and it's like, you're not going for a ride. You're in control, of course, but like you have to set up a lot of air pretty early to make sure that you slow down. Cause it's like, man, that's a lot of train. That's a lot of weight behind me trying to shove me down the hill. Feel it in your seat. I feel like the one thing that would terrify me about driving a real-life locomotive is when it starts to go and, like, you know, like, slip or something. And, like, it's a lot of weight, you know? It's like, like, it's one thing when you're in a car and your car starts to, like, slip and slide and whatever. And, I mean, I guess, you know, with a train, you're on rails, so there's that. But, like, it's a lot more weight, too, though. It's, like, it is a lot more weight. So... The catastrophic failure is much higher. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. Slip wheel slip can be really bad. Like if you have a bad slip, you can break some stuff. There have been a number of bad incidents with like real wheel slip uh, back in the day, and and even in modern day in preservation. Um, one of the worst incidents for wheel slip was uh, in Britain. It happened to a locomotive called the Blue Peter, where the locomotive had so much water in the boiler that when they open the throttle a little bit further, it started basically like a geyser, a tornado of the water from the boiler down into the engine. And that type of engine was a, a superheated engine. So the water gets into the superheaters and it immediately flashes to really, really voluminous steam. And so, you know, despite them trying to shut the throttle after that happened, the geyser kept the throttle stuck open and it, the steam kept flashing, you know, the water kept flashing to steam. And the locomotive basically went 140 or 150 miles an hour in place for like oh, 20, good. 20 that's seconds. Good. And it threw all of the rods off, blew the pistons out, like totally wrecked the engine itself. Um, and it was a bit tragic too, because the, the poor engineer tried to, tried to save it any way he could. He couldn't get the throttle shut, so he went for the screw reverser. And when he unlocked the screw reverser, it, it threw so violently that it broke both his arms like oh. really violent stuff 
so yeah no i'm i'm good i'm good i don't want to i don't want to do that yeah so you know just don't do that just don't you know have that uh, that problem and you'll you'll be okay but yeah it's definitely wheel slip is definitely not something you want to mess with but thankfully usually the the answer is you can close the throttle back and it it'll usually catch so it still would just be i feel like the most terrifying feeling you know where you're just like there is nothing i can do now and that's just it's just you know we're just gonna deal with it like it's that's it Yep. thankfully usually i mean you usually just shut the throttle and it'll be okay um obviously like the incident with the blue peter where they had the water really high uh and you know we're superheating the engine um that's that's a special case and that doesn't tend to happen too often but that's why it's really important that the firemen and the engineer and the locomotive are a really coordinated team because you got to have everything just right to make sure you don't run into situations like that all right are you are you back you've already unloaded that i've already again. unloaded and i'm on my way up the hill i i didn't have a reverse loop so i'm just shoving well, so good perfect it's fine yeah we'll we'll uh we're, we're getting there i'm i'm working on it i I'm got i just look so i just far. finished connecting the main line back up to the freight depot so very nice the main line's a little bit further out than it was but that's okay we do a little bit less of a cut across it's very gradual it's a 70 foot radius so should be you know less than 25 degrees or something like that i don't remember your math but 70 foot or 70 meter <laughs> 70 meter. I don't know. Okay. Like se yeah, 70, yeah. 70, 70 feet would that's be really uh, tight. Yeah, no, that's, that's pretty true. tight. We're parallel. We're uh, we're three point turning the train on the 70 foot. Radius. I was going to say 70 foot radius is even worse than Morrow Castle on the Uinta Railway. Um, yeah. And that the Uinta Railway madness. I mean, Mor Morrow Castle was we call it Moron's Castle jokingly because it just like a bit of railroad that like. You wouldn't want to drive up it in your car, let alone a 2662 articulated steam locomotive, uh, right. which which Kume's teased in the in the latest update. I'm actually so freaking excited for that. Those locomotives were so cool. So hopefully we get to see that in game sometime. But um, yeah, the the railroad when they got the articulated engines, they widened the curve to a 66 degree curve which is a 90 foot radius curve, which is insane, A, but it's also laid on a seven and a half percent grade. So you're just like doing a little corkscrew in a giant steam locomotive. And it's just like, why did you guys do this? There was, was there no other way? Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, okay, okay. I have, I have ideas, bro. I have some ideas. Oh yeah? I have, I like, I just came to the revelation of how I think this can work and be okay cool. that's it that's all i've got that's that's where we're at but ideas okay well at least there's that there's gonna be like one switch hub where there's just like one two three four five five switches and that like controls all the stuff that you'd be doing at the lumber mill okay that so makes it so you only way, have to stop way. one time you know that'll be nice yeah you stop at one spot set all your switches and and continue going about your business I hope. Well, that should be um, pretty nice then. You know, yeah, I just one stop. Now I have to do this bypass loop because you have to go that way. This has to, I don't know. Let's just start. I'm just going to start building from this point and see what happens. I love the new grid system because it's just so, so nice to like try stuff and then have some nodes placed and be like, you know what? I can just, you know, make an adjustment or whatever. And what was it? Oh, I got to pull up your handy dandy chart again. I'm going to try and... <laughs> Try and figure out here what's kind of what like what am I doing if I'm at 50 meters is like the absolute max that I ever want to go. Yeah, 50 meters would be yeah that'd be pretty sharp, but it like it's definitely doable. Degrees. You're still in the yellows on your chart. Yeah, that's definitely doable. Yeah, just not uh, not by some of the giant engines that would come later, but I think even um, th with 35 degrees it would be hard to say, but. The other engine that QMA teased in the, uh, the update post is the DNRG Class 125, which is the early version of the K27, which, of which there's two that still exist and, and operate in preservation, 463 and the 464. They're really cool locomotives. Uh, definitely recommend you check out footage if you want to see a cool locomotive uh, in action. They got nicknamed the, the Mud Hens or the Thunder Chicken is what the 463 Thunder gets chicken. called because it is... The mudheads, and then everyone heard the 463, and it's just got the most 
sharp and loud exhaust bark on it. Um, the only engine I've heard that's louder is actually Rear Grand Southern Number 20 that we have at the museum. Um, but yeah, it's it's just it's awesome to hear that thing work. So it's going to be cool to have those in the game, the early version of them. Um, exhaust but, head being whenever the piston finishes its stroke. And, like, yeah, the, the, the chuff the sound. Beam. Yeah, the exhaust right, beat being yeah. the yeah the, the actual chuff that you hear. Um, yeah, it's going to be cool to have those in game. And I mean, they dude, that engine sounds awesome. I hope that the uh, the sound design in the game gets to gets that feel across at some point because that's the coolest things about these locomotives is actually listening to them work. Oh man, I don't know. This is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, it's it's not. I thought it was going to be a shunt yard. It's not. I was I was expect. I I'm realizing now it's such a small area. It makes more sense to do it as a series of like bypass lines but it's it's pretty cool we're gonna have to put them all to use one time like we're gonna have yeah. to give a reason for each track so we're gonna have to like unload a log train have a cordwood train running through while someone's loading lumbers or beams or something oh yeah some, no that's all possible folks in. With yeah this, like do setup, it all you'll be able to have all three things happening simultaneously someone could bring cordwood through while someone's loading up a beam train while someone's dropping off logs and like there's places where they'll interact with each other but you know you wait for 30 seconds let the guy pass whatever yeah and, and you're good to go that's exciting that's it sounds like it's a really good design the early look that i got last time i was down is pretty good I'm loading yeah, the. Uh, figure out. I'm loading cars five and six right now, so I've I've only got two more cars to go once I got these two logs on. So I'll be down to take yeah. a peek in just a minute here. I just need to figure out how to get you back onto the bypass. So when you come through, you're driving through. Yeah, I did the. I just finished the plank loading loop, which is which is the big one. So you come through here. You're gonna unload your logs, unload your logs. I'm using crossovers, like, you know, I, I don't use crossovers very often, so it's exciting, you know? I don't know That's how much fun. you would do that on a real railroad. I feel like crossovers are dangerous for real railroads. Well, they, you know, they end up being pretty necessary when you've got multiple mains or a nested track like that. You, you really end up needing to have them, so they definitely end up being there. And uh, usually, even early in this era, to try and make them safer, they would usually interlock the crossovers. Um, what did those logs just do? That didn't make any sense. Okay, I have to what do you respot. Mean interlock them? Uh, they would lock them mechanically so that if you throw one switch, it throws the other one. So that when you pull the, the points over of the first switch in the crossover, it mechanically, through a series of pipes, chains, and pulleys, would mechanically throw the second switch. Or it would prevent uh, the signals that govern the crossover from clearing or saying yes, you can go across, unless the both switches were aligned to each other or al aligned away. Because the worst thing that you could have is having one switch that says, okay, cross over, and one switch that says, no, go straight. Because then you, right. you're gonna run through the switch or you run into the side of another train, etc. So they had mechanical ways to prevent that from happening even early in the railroad. All right, Khan, I'm highballing out of the lumber yard here. Perfect. I am uh, still just working on stuff. Just stuff, you know, happy little just, tracks. You know, just lots of lots of stuff to work on. You know, no big deal. It is what it is. Just, just happy, happy little tracks, happy little trains. It's Dude, I love laying track now. Like compared to before, it, like yeah, I didn't mind it before because I, you know, I'm, I'm I have a certain level of like stupid perfectionism, which is like. You know, and, and I'm not saying I'm perfect, bro. I'm far from perfect, but like I, I like to make things look as perfect as possible. And even like stupid details that no one will ever notice or care about, like I'm still gonna do. Like for example, right now, I'm trying to line up a track to make two switches like as perfect as possible. So there's no like bend in the track, even gotcha. though like- Gotcha, nice. Oh, I just realized this won't actually work. Never mind, I'm an idiot. Oh, uh, well, where you know. I, where can I connect you back up? That's the issue. The issue is where the heck can I connect you back into the main line? Like, back onto the... I guess I should do it here, right? Like, that goes there. If I have you connect onto the bypass here... Or, I just am an idiot, and I just give you a whole loop. Hang on a minute. I you could can get a whole have loop. Just, like, a loop where you go off on a switch, loop around, come back, and then come back on the same main line. That's kind of what I was imagining w would happen most of the time. That's what I usually ended up doing. 
that would have been really smart, wouldn't it? Well, you know. I'm trying things, okay, Heist? Leave me alone. <laughs> It's I'm all very exciting. It's all very, very exciting. None of this yeah. is conventional railroading at all. But <laughs> it's we're, fine. We're getting there. If they ran unit trains in 1880, how would have they have done it? Exactly. Oh, hello. Welcome back. I'm a little bummed that the... Um, the uh, crossover pieces don't have built-in groundwork. Well, that is kind of a bummer. How do you play, like, that seems like a little bit of a miss. Yeah, that would be, because the switch is having that, too. Yeah, you have to actually just place your groundwork, which is kind of a pain in the butt for that. Okay, so I'm coming in, I see there's a bit of a, a lead going on here now, and and the diamonds, the crossovers. Yeah. I'm going to start breaking now, because this logging train is going to show me where I, where I get to go, so. Yeah. Perfect. That, uh, I uh, love that curve around the pond. That's really pretty. But the the that's the you mean the um, from the logging or the the, the, pick the, yeah. the pickup yeah. Oh, don't worry. This is all. I might actually have your return loop finished. You might be able to just go straight and come out of here. Well, if I can ever stop. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't know how easy it's going to be, but we're going to try it. Oh, okay, I kind of see what you're doing. Oh, we're going to have, like, nested loops and stuff. This is going to be... Oh, yeah. This, this is going to be a little this, silly. I like where this, this is going. This is going to look sick. I'm trying to make super gradual curves. Like, that's the key, right? It's trying yeah. to be as gradual as possible. So you have all these nested loops. It would be easier if the crossovers had, like, you know, 45s and stuff. Yeah. But I think I'm done. So I'm going to hop on board with you. I'm going to just clear these logs off the track. Okay, I I see what's going on here. You're gonna you're gonna have to give me a. We'll have to do a little tour of the uh, the, the layout now that it's pretty yeah. much completed, right? Yeah, this is this. I like this. We'll have to drive the train around it for sure. I gotta finish unloading here. I gotta back up for this though. I How overshot. How much money did you end up making, by the way? Did you I've, end up doing like three loads? I've, yeah, this is the third load. I should have somewhere in the order of fifteen hundred dollars, so we should be able to get. You know, maybe close to six, hopefully. Um, well, if you have fifteen hundred bucks, cars? yeah, it's six yeah. six plank cars, yeah. I've got thirteen seventy right. No, I got thirteen seventy right now, and I got five more cars to unload, so we might oh, get so more good. than six. Yeah, that's awesome. There's sixty dollars a oh, piece, man, right? Oh man, this is this is the coolest log camp layout. Sawmill, same difference. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. This is the coolest layout, okay, of, of <laughs> industry X. <laughs> Insert that I've industry ever done. here. Okay, I'm actually, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. I'm He's done. done. He's calling it. There it is. I think so. I think I have all the routes we need. So, yeah, this is, this is, I'm going to go throw a switch for you. All right. I'm going to throw my bar in forwards here and <laughs> see if I can't haul it. Ooh, yeah, underwater so is, view. So, the only thing we can't do is with this lay. Oh, no, that's not even true. We could still, yeah, never mind. I made this layout awesome. Oh, dude, I'm excited. You can still go from the planks if you wanted to. I don't know why you'd ever need to do it, but you could load up planks and beams and then go to the logging camp. I don't know why you'd need to do that, but you could still do that with this layout for some reason. That's fun. So we've so got the just, bypass line. We've got the planks. Yeah, the cornwood bypass for when someone's unloading. You can yep. just bypass them as they unload. Oh, God. Um, yeah, look at all these switches. Yeah, this... yeah, all the switches are here, so I'm going to hop on board with you. Yeah, hop on. Oh my goodness, okay, so this now, is a lot of now switches. Now go to the right here. This is the right to go back to the logging camp. If you go, like, I left that line open. That's for smelter eventually. Gotcha, okay. And then you go, that other line goes back to the main freight depot, which we'll take in a bit. Okay, all right. And this goes, we'll just, we might as well just ride this all the way back to the logging camp and then do the loop around, or whatever. So this comes yeah. back around. Dude, I love this. This is the coolest. This I've is ever actually done. genius, Cotton. This is awesome. I'm tuned my own horn, but I really like this setup. Yeah, there you I'm go. also See, tuning now my own whistle. Another so, you know. crossover. So this is a loop and a loop. Like you got okay. two loops yep. here that were. So and so that's that that's the loop for the loading track, right? The loading track return or going to load. Yeah, either or. And now it puts us back onto the bypass line, which then brings us back out to the log camp. Dude, this is the best layout for the sawmill I've ever seen. This is so cool. I have seen so a lot lines. of sawmill layouts. And you could easily add more shunting if you wanted it there. Like if you wanted yeah, some, some add, space add for some cars more. and whatever. 
you could yeah, easily we have some add switch it. Switch offs there, put like a, a table if we wanted to, and uh, you know, an engine shed or whatever. Yeah, it would be super easy. Well, dude, that's so cool. That's like now it's like beautifully simple, and all the nested yeah. switches in that like that little alley at the canyon of trees there. That's that's really cool. <laughs> the one thing I like about this layout which is what I was really trying to accomplish, is all the curves are so gradual. So before I used to have issues where we, I think it's called pull through, where you like pull the front of a train and it's so heavy and long that it, like the middle comes off the track. Oh, string right? line derailment, yeah. String, that, yeah, that's what it's called. But like with this layout, I think the curves are gradual enough where we won't have that problem. I think you're totally right. Those curves were all really gentle. Um, I'm honestly impressed. I really think it's cool. All right, well, that's... That's exciting, and I don't have to fix it. That's so good. Right? Love it. It was done right the first time, because you did it instead of me. <laughs> it's not even that. It's just the spline tool makes it so much easier for a leg out track. Dude, that's awesome. I, I'm excited to get, like, multi-train operations going on. You know, train in the sawmill, you know, bringing down lumber and you know, all that stuff, moving on to the next industries. It's going to be so cool. Yep, and uh, I noticed a couple of my other buddies that like aren't YouTubers, but just buddies I have, have been playing the game again. So uh, it'll be exciting to get maybe a bunch of people in. We don't have to have them all on the same voice call, but at least we could have more train operations more trains all going running on, yeah. at the same time. Of course, we need more industries connected, and obviously a lot more money uh, is the... That's the real answer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got to make more money, get more cars, more rolling stock. I want to get more yeah. locomotives. They've added so many locomotives. You know, we've got the Zuma, and the Zuma's great, but, you know, I want to see I want to see the rest of them. I've, I've heard I've heard that the new 280, the Mosca, is supposed to go really fast. Like, it's got a higher speed limit, so I really want to try that out because, you know, what? Uh, where, where's the fun without a sense of danger at every turn? Dude, I'm, um, I'm so happy. I was, like, I was a little disappointed, I'm not going to lie, when I started trying to lay out shunting space and realized there just wasn't a lot of shunting space, but now that it's got... We're going to have... The, the theme of this world is going to be lots of loops. Nice. <laughs> lots, lots of loops. loops. LOL. Loops everywhere. The theme is LOL. Lots of loops. You know, you know that, that Buzz Lightyear meme where it's like, like you know, he's got like the, the talking to Woody. He's like everywhere, you know, stuff everywhere. It doesn't matter. Loops everywhere. That's loops what we're everywhere. Doing. Yep. Yep. For sure. Speaking of loops. Yeah, the fact that switches auto throw is great. We can just sit here and relax and let the train drive just leave the throttle wide open go to sleep <laughs> pretty much dude this is sick yeah i love this i love this little loop through the woods i, lo I love how smooth the splines are now compared to how they were yeah i have heard from some commenters on my videos that Apparently, it's the same amount of segments per spline, no matter how long the spline is. So if you make a really long curve, it might be less smooth than if it's several shorter pieces. So we'll have to keep that in mind when we make some other stuff. But so far, I haven't seen any problems with it. Seems I like noticed that when smooth. I was building, actually. Um, when I made shorter curves versus longer curves, sometimes the, the point where the track connects, like where you link it, isn't as smooth depending on how long the curve is after it. Gotcha. Yeah, that's interesting. But you can always just delete it and replace it and boom, done, easy mode. I think part of the key in this to make a really good track is using circle mode a lot. So you kind of go like circle mode, straight piece, circle mode, straight piece, circle mode, and then you kind of like line up where the radiuses are going to match, and then you just do the last little piece without circle mode, and it ends up like filling it perfectly. Gotcha. That's, that's smart. That's a good For a moment, I just not where we were. I didn't even realize we were at the log camp. I was just looking around. I'm like, where are we? And then I was like, oh, yeah, right. We're, at we're in the woods. <laughs> I have $1,670, so I could get six cars. I guess we should load it once. We're already here, right? All right. Let's do it. All right. We're all loaded up. Let's do the last run here. Yeah, we really need uh, we really need a caboose, I feel. We, we do. To... Caboose would really make the theme feel right. Yeah. The problem is they should be free because I don't want to spend money on them. Right. They don't haul goods, and they don't feel like they have and that like, much of a purpose other than looking cool right now. If we ain't hauling, we ain't we ain't balling, making sure. money. Sure. Ain't hauling, uh, ain't balling. Yeah, that could be a saying. I'm trying to think of what, like, a good, a good, <laughs> if, you ain't, if you ain't got, 
the load. You ain't got. I, I, I don't uh, know. I'm not I'm good at this. Not, I'm not good at that either. Ain't, if you ain't hauling, you ain't balling. It works, yeah. you know. Got, we got to get these logs, man. We got to drop them off at the pond, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. And then we can buy some cars and then assemble some plank trains and then sell that stuff to the freight depot. Moving up in the commodity world. Yeah, I think what is it? Logs sell for like what is it? Ten, six a ten piece, bucks five a piece? piece, ten a piece. I think it's ten a piece. I think. And then. The planks are like what, four, twelve or something, or fourteen maybe. So I think it's twelve, and then the beams are twenty-four. I think so that you end oh, up really? doing like beams are valuable, interesting. Yeah, so you get you end up with um, seventy-two dollars per car, whether it's beams or. Um, oh, or I see. It's just yeah. it's just six versus three. Yeah, exactly. But it means that if you know if you just want to load a train full of beams, you have less clicks to get that amount of money. Provided right. you have enough material that you're making. And less weight, too, actually. I'm pretty sure beam car is lighter than a... I think you're right. Yeah, I want to say beams are lighter as well. And so that might be a good strategy, because if we can pile the log pond super deep, uh, the industries now will produce two of one commodity if the other one's full. So you can yeah, just... Yeah, that's right. They changed. Yeah. That was a long time ago that was changed. That's right. So we can actually just let it drain all the beams and then just keep stocking beams only, and it does it twice as fast. Yeah, because you're loading a lot beam. less on the crane. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's a good point. We should just literally do nothing but beams to make beams money. Beams to the freight depot, man. Yeah, that's a good Give point. it the beams! <laughs> It's less clicks. I'm all about less clicks, man. That's, that's hey, where man. it's at. I, I have worn through mice before from all of the clicking, so, you know, you gotta you gotta keep that in mind. They're only good for a couple of million, so, you know. It's like, uh, it was interesting. It was, uh, my sister's got one of those folding phones. Yeah. And apparently the warranty on that is something like 250,000 folds. So I, I asked her, I said, well, how many times do you fold your phone a day? Like, to open and close it. And she's like, I don't know, like, maybe 10... 15 20 times so i did the quick math and it's like within like a year and a half two years that that's that's gone like your your phone folding isn't gonna work we're on the wrong switch no yeah yep, no. i'm yeah i tried i guess i could just run through the loop Wait, yeah just run through run through we can yeah we can make i i had it in full reverse with the brake on but coming down the percent and a half right there these log yeah, cars show work. poor montezuma what's going on Look at all these loops, man. All these loops. Look at all these loops. Appreciate the loops. I want to see this from the top, like what a top view of it is. I know, right? Can, is, there's no way to fly, though. Yeah, it's a bummer. I but think I, I think there's the still guy. a mapping uh, third-party software out there, I think. So maybe, we, uh, maybe we'll have to toss the map up on that and see what it looks like. Oh, yeah, you didn't see the bridge back at the freight depot yet, either. Oh, there's a bridge at the freight depot? No, like the bridge, the the this part of the track to go back to the freight depot. Oh, I there is a bridge built, there. I built it onto a bridge just because that'll probably all change later once we start going to the smelter and stuff. Yeah. But like, it uh, it just would look too tall for Phil, you know. I get you. I get you. Wildlife crossing, you know. It's it's a pretty big wildlife crossing. I'm not gonna lie. Dude, I love this switch junction. The, though. Just all of the switches right there. All of them. This is. This is, I love it. It's a bit of madness, and it's also a bit of, like, the railroad probably wouldn't have set it up that way just so that people don't accidentally throw the wrong switch and, and cause the train to go in the dirt. Man, but, you know, it's you fine. Label. You just need, like, signs, you know? Yeah, I want signs. They, they, they showed pictures of signs a long time ago. Signs would be very nice. It would be great yeah. to see signs in oh, so you could name things and, and uh, leave silly messages and stuff like that, you know? All right, you uh, unload that. I'm going to go fire Betsy up because Betsy's probably cold, I would imagine. Pro yeah, probably again. Probably very cold. Yeah, Betsy is very cold. We're going to just throw some logs in there and get Betsy going. All right, perfect. I'm going to just come. Stop. Stop. Zuma. Zuma is like, no, I want to go. I just go. That's all I do. I am the Zuma. Hello. Howdy. How are you? Doing well. Unloading logs. Having them bonk my head. Perfect. Knocked into the lake. It's fine. I'm gonna go set the switch to go back to the freight depot, and I can just follow you out on the same uh, same line. Okay, that sounds good. I guess I guess I'm gonna shove back because I'd have to run through the loop again to to get going the other way. But I don't think that's. Yeah, I mean you could you could yeah you could you either have to shove back. It actually kind of makes more sense for you to, I mean unload on the way in I guess because you just line up. But either way, I didn't realize when you're unloading. 
The only problem is you could be blocking the crossing of the other train. Yeah, you could be. It depends on the way that you're going and how far you are. But, I mean, it's... The unloading it's, of logs goes so quick that it's, like, it's not really a yeah, big problem. Yeah, it's not really a huge deal. Yeah. That was kind of my thought, too. Is like, it's not going to be a big deal because of how fast it's going to happen, so... Yeah. Dude, we're almost stacked up. Our log pond's got, like, 90-some logs in it. 92, Which is good, 92 because that logs. means we've also filled up the whole products. Yeah, so we should have 100, 100, and then we've got 92 in the... Uh, in the pond, That's good. so and we can. And if what you're saying about the price is true, we could just suck back beams like crazy. Yeah, I'm excited. That'll be a great next episode for us, I think. Yeah, make some money. Make that moolah. Get some new cars. Get some more choo choos. I, dude, there's so many new locomotives. I want to play with them. So we got to make some cash. Yeah, we got to make some cash for sure. And then we got to connect more industries and make bigger cash. The problem is, what does the smelter take? The smelter is iron. It's iron ore plus cord, cord wood, right? Wood? Yeah. So we're going to need to have iron, which means we need hoppers. And the iron mine takes wood products, I think. It's yeah, just... uh, lumber and the beams, yeah. All right, I'm coming up on the inside line here. <laughs> he's, got, he's got the inside line. He's taking the faster know, route. Like, this is actually kind of cool because I'm going to automatically just throw this switch. Yeah, you'll just get right in front of me. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then there we go. Perfect. Yeah, definitely an unorthodox uh, logging camp or uh, sawmill setup, I mean, but, uh, you know. Dude, I like it. It's unorthodox, but I think it's gonna be really streamlined and it's gonna work really well. So, unorthodox or whatever, I like it. Oh, and this is the older style of trestle. Yeah, cool. I wasn't in this kind of area. It seemed big enough that it needed the older, yeah, the older style. It looks nice with the pre-laid track on top of it now. It seems more uniform than it used to. Yeah, there you go. Now we're back on the main line, heading back to the freight depot. There it is. Well, next time we're gonna gonna have to run a couple trains and, and get all the commodities moving and start making that cash. Get some new yeah. trains. Hundred oh. percent. I always like more trains. More trains is more good. Yeah, I, I'm I, I'm blown away by. I could never have made a track this smooth with the old tools if I wanted to. Like, you imagine trying to make a curve this large with this size of radius <laughs> and have it look good luck like, proper. Yeah, no, there would have been. It, just, it no never would have happened. So it's, it blows my mind how good these tools are, especially like that bridge there. That bridge is like multiple segments that are all connected together, but you can never tell, even though it falls like a nice smooth S and stuff. Like, yeah, it would have been I'm such so a excited. chore to do with the old tools. So, yeah. Yeah, like I'm stoked to make mountain passes, man. Like you have no idea. Like just like all these crazy twisty turny stuff in the mountains. Like it's going to be great. Betsy's got a beefier edge than you. You're got a little like <laughs> yeah. yeah. How come Betsy gets a cooler whistle than the poor Montezuma? Yeah, what, what, what's going on? You got the you got a terrible whistle. <laughs> All right, well, I'm just gonna slam on the uh, the old brake here soon enough. Oh, you're going into a shunt lane apparently. I'm I'm shunting myself. I'm just following you whatever direction you're going. But yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. Obviously, we got more uh, more to do in railroads. We got a lot of money to make. But, uh, you know, we're not really going to do much railroad training off camera to make money. Because you figure might as well just, you know, let you guys enjoy the magic of driving trains, you know. But right. yeah, let us know what you guys think. Give us other ideas for episodes. And uh, like, subscribe. We'll see you all next time. Oh, yeah. Check out Heise's channel, too. Yeah, all that stuff. And check out Khan's channel if you're, like, one of the four people not subscribed to him. You know, so... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. Bye.